In this video, I'm going to go over the hardware overview and all of the software setup needed to get serial communication running on a Raspberry Pi and a RS-232 serial hat. Even though I will be discussing the hats that I have made, the overall content of this video should be relevant to all serial hats. Here are the two serial hats that I have made. There are probably a hundred different Pi hats available with an RS-232 interface, but these were designed for some specific purposes. The one with the 25 pin connector is designed to interface with larger industrial CNC machines. They typically have a 25 pin connector. The hat with the 9 pin connector is used for connecting to machines where the hardware interface isn't quite known, so there are jumpers on the board that allow lots of different configurations. First, let's go over what a null modem is and why it's important. Serial interfaces have transmit and receive pins. In order to keep everything standard, the transmit is located on pin 2 and the receive is located on pin 3. If you connect those two interfaces together with a straight through cable, the both interfaces will be attempting to transmit on pin 2 and both will be trying to receive on pin 3, so there will be bus contention and that is not good. A null modem cable is a cable that internally has pins 2 and 3 swapped. So pin 2 on one side is connected to pin 3 on the other side, and vice versa. This allows a controller to receive what the other one sends. The 25 pin serial hat is designed as a null modem, meaning that traces on the board will swap the transmit and receive pins so that a straight through cable can be used. A straight through cable is easier to find and are typically cheaper. Assuming some of you like to tinker a bit, as well as troubleshoot, the cable signals are brought out to the test points on the board for easy measurement with an oscilloscope or logic analyzer. Be careful though, as the voltage on these pins are RS-232 and can be plus or minus 12 volts. Some logic analyzers will not tolerate those voltages. I had a customer ask for a 9-pin hat that could be configured as a null modem or straight through board because he wasn't sure what cables he had and wasn't sure what interface was on the other peripheral that he was trying to connect to. I looked around and I didn't see many boards that were configurable in this way, so I made one. The 9-pin hat can be configured as a null modem or straight through board using the jumpers. This is also true for the handshaking lines if you happen to use hardware handshaking. Simply place the jumpers on the null modem side to swap the TX and RX lines, or place the jumpers on the standard side to make the hat send signals straight through. If your legacy system needs the DCD, DTR, DSR, or RI pins connected for any reason, the jumpers can be used to connect them together. Both of these hats utilize the TTY AMA0 serial port on the Raspberry Pi. This serial port is available on the 40 pin header. TX is on pin 8, RX is on pin 10, CTS is on pin 15, and RTS is on pin 16. I am using the Raspbian OS version 11, commonly known as Bullseye, for this video, and I don't think much will be different on any Pi-based OS that you might happen to have. Unfortunately, the serial interface isn't quite plug-and-play. There are some things that we need to configure. First, we need to make sure that the serial interface is actually enabled. The easiest way to see that is on the Pi configuration tool. Make sure the serial interface is turned on. Next, we need to make sure that the Bluetooth interface is not already using the serial port. You will need to go into the slash boot or slash boot slash firmware folder and edit the config.txt file. Use sudo on the command line because that file is not writable by everyone. Make sure the line enable underscore uart equals 1 is in the file and uncomment it if necessary. Scroll down to the end of the file and add the line dt overlay equals disable dash bt. This will disable the Bluetooth. Save the file by pressing Ctrl O, then exit using Ctrl X. Next, we need to disable the services that might be using the serial port. At the command prompt, enter sudo systemcontrol stop getty.target and sudo systemcontrol disable hciuart. 
The Pi hats have an EEPROM chip on them that tells the Pi what the pin configuration should be on boot up. If those services are not disabled, the Pi won't configure the pins correctly at boot. After those items have changed, a reboot is required for them to take effect. Type sudo reboot and hit enter. A good way to check to make sure the pins are configured correctly is to use GPIO read all. This will show each of the Pi pins and how they are configured. The thing to look for here is the physical pins 8 and 10 need to be configured for Alt 0. If you find that the board has the pins configured as something else, the quick fix is to enter the following commands, but this will need to be done after every reboot. The pin referenced in these commands corresponds with the wiring Pi column in the GPIO readall. The TX and RX pins are GPIO mode 15 Alt 0, GPIO mode 16 Alt 0. The CTS and RTS pins are GPIO mode 3 Alt 3 and a GPIO mode 4 Alt 3. For the following testing, I will be using the 9 pin hat just for convenience. Before we start testing, let's configure the port to use a default baud rate of 115200. This can be done using the STTY command. The easiest and most basic test is a loopback test, where the transmit and receive pins are connected together. Whatever gets sent should automatically be received, and no external peripheral is needed. I'm going to simply place a jumper on my board, but you can also connect pins 2 and 3 together for this test. I'm going to type test. You can see the word test showed up. Now remove the loop back and make sure that nothing shows up when you send it again. The next test is to connect it to a remote computer and verify that the send and receive are working. If I send something on one computer, it should show up on the other, and vice versa. The CTS and RTS are handshaking signals that have LED indicators on my boards so that you can easily see their state. They are not used too often, but provide an easy interface for one side to indicate to the other side that its RX buffer is full and to stop sending for a little bit. This is known as flow control in a broader sense. Flow control can also exist as a software feature where one side can send a specific set of bytes to tell the other side to start or stop transmission. Even more handshaking lines could theoretically exist than the CTS and RTS, but unfortunately the Pi UART peripheral doesn't natively support them. They would need to be simulated using GPIO if they were to exist. My hats don't support the extra handshaking lines because I haven't yet found a need for them. The next step in this serial journey is to get software working. If you are going to write your own software, there are hundreds of examples on GitHub. I have posted the class that I wrote that uses hardware handshaking as well as a separate thread for background communication. Hopefully you find an example online that will meet your needs. The link to my GitHub source code is in the description below. I hope this video has been helpful for your project. If so, please click the like button so that it can be recommended to others. Thanks again!